Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and welcome to a new season of Adventures in Compliance. In this season, we are going to review the short stories which appeared in the Strand Magazine from July 1891 to June 1892 and were collected in the book, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Over the next 12 episodes, I will be reviewing each story and mine them for leadership, compliance, and ethical lessons. In this episode, we reacquaint ourselves with Inspector Lestrade, who makes contact with Holmes about the Boscombe Valley mystery. Holmes describes Lestrade as a little sallow, rat-faced, dark-eyed fellow, which obviously is not a great description, but as the series go on, they engender mutual respect. I know you'll enjoy this episode. In this episode, Holmes and his companion, Dr. Watson, journey to the Boscombe Valley in Herefordshire to investigate the murder of Charles McCarthy. Local law enforcement believe the man's son, James McCarthy, is responsible for the crime as he was found near the crime scene in a distraught demeanor and a heated argument between he and his father had been witnessed earlier. Despite the seeming clarity of the case, the younger McCarthy's childhood sweetheart, one Alice Turner, firmly believes in his innocence and urges Holmes to uncover the truth. Holmes, known for his keen observation and logical deduction, notices several key details that other police have overlooked. Holmes discovers a clue in the form of a dying message left by the elder McCarthy, consisting of the words rat and a dying man. Holmes deduces that the message actually refers to Ballarat, an Australian town, and a dying woman, which was misheard by the elder McCarthy in his weakened state. Upon further investigation, Holmes finds out that both McCarthy and Turner's father were involved in a shared past in Australia, specifically in the town of Ballarat. Turner's father and McCarthy had been involved in a criminal enterprise, and Turner's father owed McCarthy a debt of gratitude. In the end, Holmes uncovers that it was was Turner's father who committed the murder to protect Alice from being forcibly married to James McCarthy due to the elder McCarthy's insistence. Turner's father was the dying woman, his health having deteriorated due to a terminal illness. Holmes lets Turner's father confess his crime to the local police, who in turn, due to Turner's illness and the extenuating circumstances, choose not to arrest him. James McCarthy is then released, cleared of charges, and the case is concluded. This is the first case where we do not begin at 221B uh, Baker Street, as, as Inspector Lestrade has requested Holmes' assistance. His qualities may or may not have been valued in the London Constabulary, but they garnered a knowing nod from the reader and many like themselves who may have been on the receiving end of some sort of justice meted out by Lestrade's real-life contemporaries. Police corruption was rife in the 1890s as as much as any other time in criminal history, evidenced by the police forces continued to failure to solve so many crimes the police were deemed incompetent. The Bascom Valley Valley Mystery thrust into the heart of a real doozy. It's the case in which Inspector Lestrade was requesting Holmes' assistance in the countryside. A suggestion of doubt uh, was, of course, put upon to uh, those who were charged, the younger McCarthy. As soon as Holmes arrives, he deduces that Not only is a wide variety of the facts have been misinterpreted, but clues have been overlooked. So, for instance, Holmes observes that um, someone, the person who killed McCarthy, was taller than James, the alleged assailant, and was left-handed and walked with a limp. And then, of course, the backstory: McCarthy spent a youth in uh, his living in Australia and had been a wagon driver on a gold convoy held up by bandits. One of those bandits had spent his share on the, of the booty and moving to England and buying land. There, by some circuitous coincidental route, 
He meets with McCarthy, who threatened to expose him as he was now a respectable landowner. Then James McCarthy's son, uh, McCarthy's son James, who has fallen in love with Turner's daughter, uh, with this, uh, there's a fresh plot. The pair are married. Then McCarthy realizes he can assume control of the entire estate and the ill-gotten fortune which lay behind it. Turner was backed into a corner and struck out in the only manner left to him. So yes, Turner mi- murdered McCarthy. That, the solution of the crime, was not Holmes' concern. He was hired to prove James McCarthy's guiltlessness and that he accomplished. Either the police would do the rest or they wouldn't. Either way, an innocent man remained free. This was, for my money, one of the most enjoyable Sherlock Holmes cases and certainly with I found there were multiple compliance lessons in this uh, case. Number one, the importance of complete investigations. In this story, the local police are quick to arrest James McCarthy based upon circumstantial evidence not conducting a comprehensive investigation. In a compliance setting, it's crucial to conduct a thorough investigation before drawing conclusions. Rushing may lead to wrong decisions, causing reputational damage and legal consequences. Number two, Avoid assumptions and bias. The police assume that because James McCarthy was found near his father's dead body, he must be the killer. Assumptions and biases can lead to serious compliance violations. It's crucial to base decisions on factual evidence and avoid personal prejudices. Number three, consistency in applying rules and regulations. I cannot emphasize this too much. If you're going to fire people in Brazil for cheating on their expense accounts, you have to fire the top salesman in the United States for doing the same. Holmes showed consistency in his approach to solving mysteries, irrespective of who was involved. The important lesson for compliance, once again, is rules and regulations must be consistently applied regardless of the person or situation involved. Number four, maintaining confidentiality. Throughout the story, Holmes maintains the confidentiality of his clients and their sensitive information. In the compliance realm, safeguarding confidential information is obviously paramount, and now under GDPR, it's a legal requirement. Number five, truth and transparency. The story ends with a revelation of the truth, which is initially overlooked by those in charge of the investigation. This highlights the importance of transparency in all dealings and the pursuit of truth, even when it's uncomfortable. Compliance programs should prioritize transparency and encourage the disclosure of truth. Number six, adherence to ethical standards. Sherlock Holmes, even though he's not a police officer, maintains high ethical standards while conducting his investigation. This is crucial, a crucial lesson for individuals in the compliance field. You must adhere to the highest ethical standards regardless of your position or situation. And finally, number seven, accountability and justice. At the end of the story, the real killer is identified, and even though he escapes traditional punishment due to his death, There's a sense that justice has been served. In compliance, holding people accountable for their actions is important in ensuring justice. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Adventures in Compliance. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever great podcasts are listened to. If you are a lover of Sherlock Holmes and would like to come on an upcoming podcast and talk about your favorite short story with me, I'd love to have you. As you could probably tell, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and I find a lot of compliance lessons learned in the Sherlock Holmes oeuvre. Adventures in Compliance is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.